Hey, okay, so here we are again. Uh, today we're gonna talk a little bit about a price reduction, okay? Now, unbelievably, sometimes you do have to take a listing that's maybe a little bit too high priced, and now it's time to go back to the seller and talk to them about the price reduction, okay? Now, there's a couple things you need to understand about pricing, okay? First thing about pricing is that if their motivation is high, okay? If their motivation is high, then you can take the price a little bit higher all right so long as everybody knows that the price is high they're cool with it and they understand that that is against your professional judgment okay but only if their motivation is high now if their motivation is low all right and their price is high okay then you don't take the listing it's pretty simple if your motivation is low and the price is high don't take it but if their motivation is low and their price is low, okay, then great, take it, all right? So that being said about pricing, that's very simple metric to remember, all right? Motivation's high, their price can be a little bit higher, that's fine. If their motivation is high and their price is low, that's perfect. If their motivation is low but their price is high, don't take it. If their motivation is low but the price is low, take it. That's pretty simple. Okay, that being said, now, Now let's talk about the actual price reduction. Now we're going to assume that for some reason or another, they've not uh, sold, okay? And remember that if the home in 30 to 45 days is getting zero showings or very low showings, zero offers, okay? Zero offers, zero to low showings, okay? Then it's about 10% overpriced, okay? It's about 10%. If you're getting a high number of showings, okay, and you're getting a few offers, but they're low, low ball offers, something like that, okay, then the price is about 5% overpriced, okay? The worst thing you can do with your seller is to go ahead and tell them it's $100,000 and then reduce the price to say 98, all right? $2,000 price reductions will not get you anywhere, and they'll get you nowhere fast. More, more importantly, it will do nothing more than aggravate the seller because you not only are you not getting results, but then you're going to have to come back to them in a couple weeks and ask for another one. They don't like that, all right? So get a big price reduction. Get the right price that you can if possible. Try and get big ones, 10%, 5%. If they want to give you a $2,000 price reduction, if the price is $100,000 and they want to go to 98 then say, I'm sorry, it's probably not a good idea to do that. It's against the best interest at this point. If they want to go to 95, okay, but they're having no showings, that's not going to be enough. Ask for more. If, you know, if they're getting $100,000 and they're getting the right showings, you know, a lot of showings, maybe a couple low ball offers, then yeah, fine, 5% off is fine, okay? Now, that being said, now you're talking to them on the phone, all right? And you say, look, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, guess what? You know what? I made a terrible mistake when I listed your home. Made a terrible mistake, okay? Can I explain? Well, of course, yeah, of course, yeah, tell us what's up. You see, when I listed your home, I wasn't strong enough on the price. So I wrote down, you know, and you want to do all this in person. Okay, you want to do all these price reductions in person if possible. All right, I wrote down a couple solutions. Okay, number one, we reduce the price. Okay, reduce the price by X percent. Okay, that's option number one. Okay, option number two. Okay, we add an additional. Okay. 1% to 2% towards the selling agent's commission, okay? Benefit to that is you don't have to come up with $5,000 down. This doesn't cost you anything unless they bring an offer that's acceptable, and that's a great way to do it, and it will increase the traffic, okay? Third option, the extend the listing agreement, okay, for another two months for the market to catch up, okay? Or number four, give the listing back. Okay, give the listing back. And the purpose of that is really simple. 
The reason why is because if their home is not selling, okay, and you're making calls to them week after week after week, and you're telling them nothing has changed because their home hasn't sold, they're getting aggravated with you. You're not happy. You don't want to make that call. They're not happy because they don't want to reduce the price. Nobody's happy. Why keep it? Reduce the price or get rid of it, okay? That's one way to do it. Now, that's one way to do the price reduction. Another way to do the price reduction, okay? is to say, Mr. and Mrs. Siller, you know, based on my knowledge, okay, it seems like you're still the highest bidder for your home, okay? Well, what do you mean it's the highest bidder for your home? Well, we listed the property at $95,000, okay, and we've had it on the market 30, 45 days, but nobody has agreed to pay the price. Nobody except you has agreed that this home is worth 95,000, okay? So based on that knowledge, we need to reduce the price, okay? Or correct the price is a great way to put it, by 5%, 10%, whatever. Whatever you feel is appropriate, okay? Now, if you're gonna do this on the phone, okay? You can say, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Sutter, hi, I'm calling you with your weekly update, and you should be calling your clients every week just to let them know what's going on with the sale of the home. And in the last seven days, okay, we've had blank showings. How many ever that is, okay? We've had zero offers, okay? And as we discussed before, okay, it's now time to go ahead and reduce the price to create some activity on your home, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and recommend we reduce the price of 5%, 10%. I'd like to go ahead and get started on that today, okay? And then the next, and the last technique I'll show you here is on a scale of one to 10, scale of one to 10, okay? On a scale of one to 10, meaning that number one, we got to move now, okay? And 10 is we'll move if we get our price, where do you think you'd be? And this is important to know because the seller's motivations can change over time and they just won't tell you and it's okay. You have to be okay with that, all right? You have to understand that the seller will not always be okay with reducing the price because, hey, things have changed. You know, they're not as sick as they were before or they got a job or the kid's okay or whatever. Their life has changed and they don't need to sell it as that bad anymore. And they say, well, Carl, we got to move now. I mean, we've, we've got this move coming up. We got to go to, you know, Charleston. We got to do this. We got to do that. You know, whatever it is, but we got to move now. The Mr. Seller it is imperative that we correct the price by 5% tonight, okay? We've had it on the market all this time. The market is not agreeing with the price. We need to reduce the price. And if they say, well, you know, we're only gonna move if we get our price, hey, guess what? Then you gotta let that listing go. Sometimes the best thing that you can do to your list, um, some, sometimes the best thing you can do to your business is to let listings go. It's hard, I know, it's not fun. But sometimes for your own sanity, for your own team integrity, you have to go ahead and let the listing go. If you're prospecting every day, if you're doing the things I'm telling you to do, you will have lots of business under your belt and you won't have to worry about it so much. But anyway, I hope this has been helpful to you. If it has, feel free to like, rate, and subscribe down below. And we'll look forward to talking to you soon. Thanks a lot and have a powerful selling day. Bye-bye.